All right, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. It's been a little while, episode 94. Closing in on that century. Getting there, six to go. I'm joined by my infamous co-host. Some call him the Danny McBride of the AFL media world. <laughs> I'll take um, that. Whereas I'm more it. of the uh, AFL... James Franco. Zach Efron. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm definitely Jim Carrey, the uh, Dumb and Dumber version. <laughs> but, uh, I, I did get that a lot growing up, actually. But, um, Busher, how are you? Yeah, chugging along, bloody yeah. Yeah. Got a fresh haircut before my surgery. Figured I wouldn't have time to do it afterwards. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at your mullet and I'm feeling jealous. Obviously, mine uh, got the snip, as it were. Yep. I've been close a few times, but the one thing that's kept me going on for admissions going, I'm rolling up there with a filthy mullet. Mm. And God mm. damn it, I'm going to roll up to that Supreme Court with a filthy mullet. When are you getting admitted as a lawyer? The Friday, next Friday. Oh, cool. Nice yeah. one. So it'll be the Tuesday getting my knee done, and then yeah. on the Friday rolling up to court in crutches. Oh, wow. Do it, uh, Get a cane like Nat Five. Oh, yeah. Bloody hell. When I've got the brown low, bloody... And they'll take a picture with me admission buddy thing with my shirt off. Mm, mm, yes. That'd be a different anyway. spin on the cliche photos in the front of the Supreme Court <laughs> Gardens, but I digress. Yes, yeah. Not the re- usual reason you go to court for, but... But I digressed mainly for a manscaped ad. Oh, yes, yes. I was going to roll through that, forgetting that. Uh, before we get into podcast today, guys, it's a good time. Good time of the year, I think, to yeah. look at your manscaping routine and wonder how you can level up. How's your manscaping routine right now? Look at me, it's as bad as fresh as it's been in about two months. Yeah, that, that beard for a start is well, yeah. nicely proportionate. Yeah. Yep, she's um, a bit less haggardy and puby and a bit more stylish. Mm, I can see I a say? bit of the chest hair as well. Oh, well, yep, they're starting to grow nicely. after 26 years, 27 years of existence. <laughs> yes, that's true. Uh, but we're coming into some better weather. Uh, but not only yeah. that... Um, so my point being, better weather means your you rigs out a bit more, uh, therefore manscape. But also Christmas is around the corner bush. Yeah, uh, we just it's the second of first of December today. Um, so great gift ideas. Go to manscape.com. You get twenty percent off and free shipping uh, on all their great products. It's not just a ball and hair trimmer. They've got the they got a nose hair trimmer. Yep. They've got all your different liquid formulations. Oh. That was your nickname in high school. Um, <laughs> that you could possibly want. So get it for yourself. Get it for a mate. Maybe not your dad, but... Oh, I gave the old boy a one just to use as a face shaver. Yeah, right. It was a used one, I was going to say, yeah, secondhand. <laughs> no, one. no, it was one of the spare ones we had lying around. Oh, cool. There you go. Yeah. So, And he's still using it and raves about it. Oh, good. Yeah, so right. that's an endorsement. Yeah, there you go. It is a great product. So yep. go check out manscaped.com. For 20% off and free shipping, use the code TRUEFOOTY20. <laughs> All right, well, I want to talk about the draft today, Bush. Obviously, uh, that happened a couple of days ago. We were on the stream for day one. Um, it's been a little while since we did a pod. The last time we did it was straight after the grand final with Jeruz. I believe yep. that was the last podcast we did. So it's been a little while in between drinks. Of course, we've been doing content still. Um, but before we get into the boring draft stuff, how about those fucking Socceroos? Oh, yeah. Did you watch right. that? I didn't end up catching. I was like, I was half going like, I'll chuck it on if I'm still awake. But I fell asleep on the couch at about 10.30, mm. just watching random crap on YouTube. Yeah, I, I have to mention it because it was uh, one of the cooler Australian sporting moments in a while i think oh yeah it's so, crucial to, gets us pretty much in the next round for sure don't it yeah we're yeah, through yeah, yeah yeah so um i was very attached to the 06 world cup because my dad won tickets to the australia brazil game so we flew to europe to watch that game uh and obviously that was a that was a dream world cup for us so we'd never made the world cup before and we got through the group stage and then back then like the, the Australian soccer team had a lot of players in the Premier League, like Tim Cahill, Harry Kuehl, Mark Viduka, uh, Schwarzer. The golden age of Lucas the Neal. Sort of thing, yeah. yeah, exactly. And so this World Cup was probably the least fancied we'd ever been. We barely qualified, much like 06, because we uh, went through on a like penalty shootout. And then to win two games, which we've never done before, we led all three games. We're beating France <laughs> at one point. Um, France nearly fucked us over, by the way, by dropping oh, yeah. all their key players for the last game. But Shh. yeah, when when um, Lecky scored, huge yeah. moment, and uh, yeah, just had to shout that yeah. out because it was a cool, cool thing. And we got Argentina oh, yeah. next, um, so I would love to live stream it, but I think we're probably going to get like a three AM fixture here. Oh, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, they'll cater the, the Argentinians probably on that one. Mm. Yes, they're yeah. probably about the opposite end of the time scale to us. True, I, I do think all the knockout games are likely to just be like prime time. Yeah. yeah, so that makes sense. But yeah, enough about that. Uh, Bush, we obviously had the draft this, oh, yep. uh, what was it? Last today? few days. Oh, t- yeah, today's Thursday. It usually so. starts today. It's weird. True, yes. Yeah. They pushed it back because of the AFLW grand final. Yeah. So pushed it back uh, a little bit later, decided to do it Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday for the rookie draft. Uh, so we record this on Thursday. Um, I guess, what did you think of the draft before was, we get into the nitty gritty? It's one of those ones. It's the first one in a while where I've gone in pretty like 
not knowing much at all and just sort of taking it as the spectacle for it is and it was sort of yeah it was pretty good to sort of have that kind of view on it rather than going oh yeah this guy i'm predicting this guy yeah, over unders on where he's going that sort of thing mm. and sort of going, no, i was right about that guy oh i was wrong about him it was just sort of mm. take them as they come sort of thing yeah um that it, yeah it, it's it goes to show because we've kind of flipped where um, my team is now heavily invested in the draft and rebuilding as yours has been for the five year or four four out of the five years we've been doing oh, yeah. the show uh, and now yes yeah, for the first draft in a while where you've gone into it kind of nonchalant traded early early picks for an established player which is normally the west coast way <laughs> over the last few years so yeah. Um, yeah I love the draft regardless anyway we could have pick 50 and I'd still be invested yeah. to some extent but uh, yeah this one was a bit more exciting for obvious reasons yeah. But even me, I've just had a busier year. It's sort of hard to find the time to mm. do the dive that I usually do. Yeah, true. doesn't mean I don't enjoy the dive, but yeah. Yeah, that's very true. Yeah, I've still sort of done a little bit afterwards, but a bit more refined looking into specific people. Yeah, yeah. Picks that intrigued me, that sort of thing. The most of the best advice I could give to anyone who follows the draft and is passionate is just try not to get your hopes up too much because <laughs> A, you like, you'll probably be disappointed on the night. But B, you're also probably going to be wrong when you were disappointed. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, usually. It depends who you go for, obviously. But uh, being happy the day after or upset about the draft the day after means nothing in the long run. What was the statistic you mentioned on the live stream where you were talking about where you looked back at who you'd had the Eagles taking versus who performed? It wasn't? Didn't you do a look yeah, back? Yeah, you're right. That? I did do that. Uh, thanks for calling that out. Um, <laughs> you mentioned yeah. it already, yeah, so I, I thought know, it was a good little... Yeah. thing to illustrate your point essentially what i did was an exercise of um going back over every draft because uh, i have a pretty good memory for this stuff and picking who i would have picked at those picks uh rather than who was actually taken and the, t- the team that west coast would have now if it was me taking those picks is far inferior to the, the list we've assembled now um, there's a few other factors in that you know some teams are better at developing so a good player can get drafted to a crap team and then flop yeah. but it doesn't mean like if we didn't pick him yeah, whatever yeah. but yeah long story short the recruiters know best um yeah. when you go for a decent club which um yeah. i do yeah. and they know of. like <laughs> they sort of know what to work with what they've got and what to complement they've got the context but we don't mm. and the and the character interviews as yeah, well yeah, which exactly. is important Ooh, yeah. Um, yeah i'm not even just talking about being a squeaky clean kid with no like yeah. rap sheet and it's more just like the dr- the drive to succeed as well we don't yeah. get that exposure um, yeah so Anyway, well, in this pod, we're going to talk about the teams that we think kind of did well. Um, you can frame it as winners and losers and, and trying to give it grades. I don't know if we'll do that. I think it's too early to do that. You can't say anyone won or lost the draft. But you can make a little bit of a assessment on how well they did with the picks that they have. Because if you did losers and stuff, you'd probably just have all the losers as the clubs that didn't have great picks. Yeah. So it's kind of a redundant thing. And they, Richmond, even yeah. though they leveraged their picks probably as well as anyone did this year. Yeah, you, yeah. You could say. I actually quite like the two kids they picked up as well. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, so we'll go through the teams that we think did well. In, and I guess we'll frame it as we can see this draft hall having an impact pretty soon for these respective clubs. So um, we'll start with some home runs, Bush. I'll let you kick off with the first club that you think did really well. Absolutely. Well, since you're going to let me go first, I'm just going to take an absolute layup here and say the Brisbane Lions getting in Will Ashcroft and Jasper Fletcher. They did. Stevie Wonder could have pulled this off, to be fair, (laughs) because, like, well, they had to trade for some points and stuff to be fair to the list managers and stuff, but their decisions were made for them 12 months before the draft, really, mm. in a way. Mm. Will Ashcroft was the standout player of this year's crop in terms of production in, like, NAB League, all that jazz. And then even Jasper Fletch has shown enough to get bid on just outside the top 10 and consistently be about that range. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I think um, I think supposedly the Bulldogs bid on Fletcher a bit out of spite, although I don't think it really cost Brisbane anything because they only took the two players anyway. Um yeah, so overall, you, they got pick two and 12 out of this yeah. draft, and they finished, uh, well, they made a prelim yep. um, to get the second best, well, many people are saying the, the unanimous best player yep. in, the, in, the, uh, in the draft pool, and then another first round pick, and then they've added Josh Dunkley, and they've also signed Connor McKenna. I think you have to give some props to the yeah. recruiting team, because there was a time where I was looking at their yeah. trade period and thinking, I don't know how they get all this done, but yeah. they pulled it off. Yeah, i am give them credit overall. I've what yeah. I was sort of saying before was just more the draft itself yeah, yeah. specifically. I wasn't knocking them. No, no, no. I got, I got <laughs> yeah, that. I was just cool. more saying, yes, they fell into their lap. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, they've done pretty well oh, yeah. with that. So I, I think 
they've been drafting well over a number of years. I think there's a bit of a belief, you know, some of their stars are aging, but I still think in that middle tier. A lot um, of youth driving. Yeah, there's still a lot of good players um, approaching their prime. And then you add pick two and 12 out of this year's draft. And, and Dunkley as well from the yeah, extended switch right. period. He's yeah, pretty he, young. He's only 25. Yeah. So, yeah, good position to be in at the Brisbane Lions. So that one's a no-brainer, I yeah. agree. Um, Thank you for giving it to me. Yeah, no worries. That's all good. <laughs> yeah. uh, cool. So another team that I think did well, uh, this is no particular order, but from a value proposition point of view, I think St. Kilda deserves a bit of credit. Uh, so they picked pick 10, Mateus Philippou, one of my favorite players in the draft, which you know is probably not a good sign. Uh, they have a habit of taking this. Remember, I like Hunter Clark and yeah. Blake Akers as yeah. well. <laughs> oh, yeah. They generally take Yeah, You so, could get so a job with St. Kilda. I, shows how good I am at, <laughs> at yeah. recruiting. Um, I am St. Kilda. Nepotism. Yeah. Keep it up. But regardless, you're looking at a player that was considered uh, worthy of going pick five, uh, and then he slid through to 10. So They that, even asked Dodoro, and he said it was a very big toss-up at Essendon between mm. those two. Yeah. So from a value point of view, that's good. And then right. we're looking at a guy who's got a lot of upside, because that's probably what... Yeah. St Kilda are looking for, um, you know, a Bond style player, yeah. and we all we all are. Yeah. But that's another uh, string to their bow is a player, a dynamic player like that. They still need a potential A grader, yeah. Or two really, yeah. That's They've got right. the rest of it, but they need another A grader or two to help, like your Jack Steels, those sort of dudes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they've got they got a lot of solid players in that team. Uh, so yeah, looking for the higher ceiling types makes sense. They got James Van Ness, who uh, I don't know a whole heap about, but I know he's one ninety seven centimeters key back. Um, so it fills a need for them. I was a big fan of Ollie Hotton. He went as late as 35, and I um, wrongly thought he might go first round at one point. He was estimated to close to that mark, they reckon. Like Fox Footy's had him about that mark, I believe. Yeah, I think he's he's yeah. a more or less a slider. He was one of those guys that Mick Ablett and Sheen was like, oh, they're mm. that late, they got a bloody steal. Yeah, good James skills. James Warpley type, possibly. Yeah. We're not a captain. Yeah. Of his state team, but still. Yeah, well, he, he's kind of like a lead up forward who can play both in the midfield and behind the ball so uh, versatile skillful talented uh, at pick 35 that's great I would have been stoked with that Uh, and then at pick 44 Isaac Keeler there's some mixed thoughts on Keeler but some people believe he's got as much upside as anyone in the draft he's a 198 centimetre forward ruck um, sort of guy who sort of wins his own clearance bombs it along and then is just a freak athlete uh, he was a next generation academy talent for Adelaide. They did uh, forego that, but then um, you know it wasn't that long ago. People were saying maybe Collingwood in the first round would take Keeler, so he slid to pick forty four. So from a, from a value point of view, St Kilda did well. Yes, there's probably some risk over a lot of those players, uh, mainly Keeler and maybe Philippou, depending on your thoughts. But a lot of upside there, and uh, with pick ten and onward, I think they've done very well. Yeah. Who else we got that you think did particularly well? Well, you've given me another pretty easy one. A team that had two very high picks in this year's draft, North Melbourne. They got two local boys who, by some accounts, were more than happy to stay home, so they've sort of given them the opportunity to do that on a young, burgeoning team with a new coach in Alistair Clarkson. These two young guys, Wardlaw and Sheasel, will be able to come right in and add something to this team, even though they've got some other guys who are starting to come through. Yep. But yeah, a bit more depth to push everyone's standards. Yep. High-end talent like these guys. It's going to drive things up at North, I think. Local as well, Yep, which is handy after the Horn Francis uh, debacle. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's all, we're talking about on the stream. I think he's probably one of my favourite players in this draft as well. Just a real Stevie J type dynamic, something out of nothing forward. But he backs that up with production as well. So he's consistent, right. kicks bags. Um, and he has proven an ability to win the footy in the midfield as well. Um, I think he's such a good forward that he starts his career there, but if he becomes a midfielder as well, like maybe like a Toby Green, yeah. I guess in reverse, uh, then we're talking about you know a genuine A-plus player in the yeah. comp. So. Him being a forward makes the decision easier for North Melbourne as well because they've still got guys like LDU, Taron mm. Thomas, some other guys that are trying to play through the midfield. Yep. The fact they can offer that gets him more senior opportunities quicker, whereas Wardlaw's got a few more guys to beat out for the his preferred role yeah exactly um and yeah pro- he was probably considered the best pure inside mid in the draft uh north melbourne there so uh, sorry wardlaw there to north melbourne so in losing a forward mid in horn francis they've replaced him with a forward and a mid so yep. in terms of balance and pure talent north have killed it uh Braden george is also a very good pick at pick 28 i think it is off the top it was a of bit head. of a slider wasn't he a little bit of a slider yeah. i think he was considered by many a top 10 talent and then i believe he did his acl during the year um but uh sort of like a powerful dynamic forward but genuine midfield stoppage player as well so 
lots of upside there for Braden George. I was quietly hoping the Eagles would get him as well because we had a pick in that range, but he's made it to North Melbourne. So arguably three top 10 talents out of that draft. And yes, they had the picks, but either way, we're talking about how much will this draft pool improve them uh, over the next two to three years. I think certainly she's will be playing pretty well. Um, so I'm a fan. You shizzle him playing well? Hey? You shizzle him playing well? What does that mean? Sheasel, I'm just sort of trying to make a shit pun with his name. What's the pun? You see him playing. Ah, uh, that was shit. Yeah, yes. it was pretty shit, but. <laughs> well, you got to sheasel all the opportunities you can get. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that was a bit better. I'll give you that. Uh, and Brent Harvey's son also joined yep. the Ruse as well. Cooper Harvey. So I don't I know if his name is. About him, but yeah, I'd imagine a small midfielder, well, yeah. to be honest. Um, I kind of turned a blind eye to some of Father's sons because. It's foregone conclusion. Mm. We like the mystery of the speculation of the draft. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like Christmas. What am I getting for Christmas? Once you've got it, it's a bit... True, yeah. true. Yeah. Cool. Uh, no, another team I'd like to nominate would be the Hawthorne Footy Club uh, for a very productive uh, tr- uh, draft period. Now, there's some context to this because they did do an interesting trade, didn't they, Bush? Yeah. I'll run through who they got first. Pick seven, yeah. Cam McKenzie, another one of my favourite players. I was pretty open-minded this draft. I genuinely thought there was an even sort of uh, block of players there and Cam McKenzie... Would have been very happy if he'd lasted two more picks to West Coast. Josh Weddle, they traded up for. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, he's a key defender officially uh, with some potential to play elsewhere. They did talk about big-bodied mids in this draft, so Weddle could play there. Cam McKenzie's 187 centimetres. Then they added a 194-centimetre midfielder in Husswaite, who, again, was probably rated a little bit higher than 37 where he went. O'Sullivan uh, is a smaller midfielder, and Bailey McDonald, I must admit, I don't know too much about, but those were the lady, later picks. So we'll talk about the the trade that they did. I was going to save it for later, but it's quite relevant. So Sydney were on the clock. Again, we'll talk about that soon too. Um, I was going to say my boys. Yeah. So Hawthorne traded pick 27, a future second, and a future third for pick 18 in this year's draft. So that was uh, essentially Cooper Vickery, a second rounder next year, and a third rounder next year for Josh Weddle. So steep Mm. price, right? Oh, yeah. However, upon a little bit of investigation, I believe Hawthorne currently have a father-son that might go in the first round next year. Mm. So suddenly that future second and future third is um, less valuable, you'd say, because they can find other ways to accumulate the points. So it kind of clears up the back end of their draft and gets a player that they really wanted. It's still a bit of a steep price, but regardless, either way you slice it, they've got two first round draft picks this year. Um, They're likely to have, you know, pick one to five next year. And then potentially a father-son with whom they can accumulate points some other way. So productive, I think, and pretty smart. And there's a chance that all those players become midfielders because Weddle is like a big, powerful, key defender yeah. sort of utility that they think might play in the midfield. The compa- one of the comparisons I saw, I think, was like a Griffin Logue, just one of those athletic yeah. freaks that's just like slightly undersized as a true key defender but got the athleticism to make up for those three, four centimetres. Yeah. But that athletic can do other stuff too, like... A big bodied mid. Yeah, exactly. That type of thing. Yep. So, um, yeah, I I don't know him too intimately to to be able to give you an analysis of what I think he'll become. I think they paid a lot for him, but with the context of next year's draft and they've got the father son, uh, assuming that's the case, then it actually doesn't look so bad on paper. Yeah, it definitely works a lot better for them if that's the case. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Bush, take us through the next team you want to talk about. Well, Essendon sort of were pretty reasonable. They sort of had Philippou fall into their lap, which I guess was good. Oh, Satsdus, sorry. Sardis. Sardis, sorry. I've gotten the two mixed up bloody multiple times this podcast, but yeah, Sardis. A Philippou coming onto yeah. my lap. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that was the toss-up between the two. I mentioned it before, but yeah. Sardis, the guy they chose over him and Philippou, so they must really rate Sardis because they're both great talents. Yeah. They sort of... Dodoro alluded that he fits a bit more with their team and their need, so they know their list. And then a bit later on, well, they got the Davy Twins as well. That's a bit of nostalgia as well. So, mm. yeah, that's good for them. The Davy yeah. pick, I think the, one of the biggest wins for them was that the Davy bid came so late. So, I think uh, it was originally as early as the 20s. I thought we might bid because it would have eliminated uh, another Essendon pick. But it came at like 45 and then they only used 49 to match it. So, that was a free kick for them. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, so they kept that second pick and added Lewis Hayes, who they kind of needed another key back to, to pa- uh, pair up with um, Zach Reed down yeah, there yeah. long term. And Sardis was, you know, arguably just best available. 
um, highly rated top five mid all season. Yeah. Uh, damaging outside player. So add something that it didn't have. So Yeah, Hayes is a pretty good guy to get in that sort of mid twenties kind of range. Just mm. something to add. Like Reed they took with a pretty high pick, so you don't necessarily want too high pick kind of mm. key backs. That's a lot of high draft investment in one sort of position. Yep. Whereas the first and the second you can sort of justify that a bit more because you do need that highish talent. I agree. Yeah. And those key posts. For sure. We'll talk uh, again. Uh, I'll talk about Carlton now before we uh, move on from the topics. But another team that I think did uh, had a pretty good draft haul. So Oliver Hollands, I am a fan of again. I yep. know it sounds generic to talk about all these players I was a fan of. I thought this guy was going to go to West Coast, uh, but he's the brother of Elijah. Uh, really good, fast outside wingman. And the thing I really like about him is a really two way player. Like he'll he'll run back just as hard as he runs forward and tackles players, um, which is a great attribute to have him in a wingman and probably a good skill to offset like their other gun midfielders if they've got a, a damaging player who's also defensive. They traded in to this draft at pick 30 and took Lockie Cowan from Tasmania, 187 centimetres, uh, medium defender, good rebounding sort of skillful player, add something, maybe you could say a Doherty replacement when the time comes. Uh, Jackson Bins, I don't know a whole heap about. I think he's a fast wingman. And Harry Lemmy started the year. At, he went pick 47, 200 centimetre key forward. He started the year as a top three prospect, even early in the season, considered top five, top 10. Uh, slid all the way to 47. I believe he's got some personal issues, not sure, but top three talent doesn't disappear. So um, to get him at pick 47 as a sort of project forward, uh, I think the Blues have done pretty well there for the picks that yeah. they have. So Yeah, maximise the value. Yeah. For sure. Cool. So we've nominated some teams that we think did particularly well, yep. um, at least in our opinion. Uh, I haven't mentioned my club yet. I would like to talk about them. Yep. But before that, I'd like to know your thoughts on Fremantle's draft hall. I know you had a bit yep. of a relaxed view of this year's yep. draft, as you should when you've got late picks. Yep. Um, but first of all, what did you say you, you felt like you wanted Fremantle to do going into this draft? I wasn't really too sure. I kind of do agree with the key defender repl- and ruck sort of replacements that they've heavily targeted which is, was obviously a need with Lobb, Meek and Logue all leaving. So we did need some young talent to cover those areas, even though we still have some talent in most of those stocks. Mm-hmm. But going in, like even initially after the second night of the draft, because we did the first night of the draft together, so we didn't see any Freo picks together. But the second night, I was, we were sort of talking about, I was like, yeah, it's pretty mid. Like it was mm-hmm. pretty mid-draft. Sort of like, yeah, you, they did take who you'd expect. Sort of hard to say how they went, but it's one of those ones where you look back in a few years' time, you could look at it and go, yeah, they did really well. Mm. But I was listening to Kevin Sheehan and Mick Ablett making a few points about it, and they made a really good point. They talked about how we sort of differentiated from other teams and tried to target mature players a bit more. And I think when you're on those lower-end picks where you're speculating on younger talent a bit more, sometimes it's better to go to the more established thing where you mm. know the floor a bit more, True. you know what you're working with, you know what tools you can give them to add, that sort of thing. And Freo's really capitalised on it to that point with guys like Luke Ryan, Brandon Co- well, not Brandon Cox, he was at the correct age for the mm. draft. Mm. But yeah, Switters, your Lockie Schultzes. And going back further, yeah. Mzungu. I want to yeah. say it was DeBoer mature age. I want to say think he so, might have yeah. been. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, Ballo yeah, yeah, on Barlow as well. So yeah. a good long history, actually. And, yeah. I, I feel like and a lot of guys out of the VFL as well. So you can yeah. tell that Dockers scouting team are really watching the VFL mm. league games and sort of seeing there's some talent there that they can capitalise on. Even like Wagner, who's at his third AFL club out of the VFL good season in the VFL yeah Emmett a mature age out of Adelaide yeah uh, he's got a really good story he, true, he's, true. Uh, his draft year he got non-Hodgkin's lymphoma so he couldn't do his draft year mm. kicked that fought it it's all good insane. came back and worked his way up to Sanford League finally got into the league team week to week you just saw that improvement in him yeah so I'm pretty optimistic to see what someone like that can do in a professional environment yeah, what a champion! That's uh, uh, I, I did read that this morning. That's a, that's a crazy story. Uh, um, yeah, just on the mature topic. Yeah, you guys, I think almost the trendsetters. I think back like in the Barlow days where you started drafting matures and then um, matures, <laughs> and uh, and had some great success. I think uh, I read. I can't remember who said it. Uh, whoever one of your recruiters was just talking about how um, the obviously the loss of depth led to a bit of a need for mature talent. Obviously, Monday yeah. retiring and then all, all the players that left, even though you got some players in like O'Meara and Jackson. Um, you've, you've added Emmett, so are yeah. ready to go f- uh, medium forward. And then Corey Wagner as well, who's played 19 games at AFL at North and Melbourne as well. No, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. 
I had to check if it was the same Corey Wagner because it seems <laughs> yeah. so random. Um, but another one, Max Noble. Do you, yeah. re- do you remember Trent Noble? Briefly, Richmond? I think he was St Kilda. He could have been both. I think he was. I think he was two clubs, yeah. But he ended at Richmond because Max, I've read something, right. was like, I'd go for Richmond because that was dad's last club or whatever. Okay. I, yeah. I think of St Kilda, but maybe it, will, maybe it was Richmond. Um, he might have both. got a few in at the tail end at Richmond sort of mm. thing after Saints yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. I'm not too sure. The name's vaguely for me, but I like the look of Max. 206 yeah. centimetres, so yeah. got to be a long-term project. Very agile yeah. for that size. I watched the highlight reel. Like, he's not like an imposing tall. He's more of an agile, mm. lanky tall. Yeah. I would have been happy with him had we not got Barnett, uh, yeah. but Noble was a player I was aware of, and um, I think I think it's a good good yeah. selection for you, and you have a good history of taking rucks as well. We have a good time them. of taking Vic Country rucks after the main ruck of the draft was yeah. taken much earlier. Yeah, uh, Team English, Sean Darcy, all over again. That's hopefully. right. That's right. Yeah. Except this time, well, hopefully, you guys taking the high picked rock. Well, I mean, if Barnett's as good as Tim English, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah fucking know. Yeah, this, at this rate, so yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Um, cool. So overall thoughts on on Fremantle. Obviously, you can't be too critical, but uh, comfortable with the picks that were made. Yeah, quite comfortable, and like at, with the added context of that mature argument being added to my thought process, that's really mm. boosted my optimism. Yeah, as all the post draft reading you do for your own team usually does in these situations. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you guys have been loaded up with young talent, um, so to speak, for a number of drafts now. Uh, you know, three top well, yeah. ten picks, two top fives in seventeen. Even though you, I know you lost one. Yeah, um, yeah dozens. You have first yeah. rounders falling out of your ass. So. <laughs> Literally, low <Logue>, Chera. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Yeah, <laughs> going back to other clubs. Um, cool. Talk about the West Coast Eagles. Yep. Um, do you have any opinion on how they went? I know yeah. you. Didn't. I was just say they did pretty well, really. Like, mm. buddy of mine. Cousin of Ruben Jimby, he's oh, pretty yeah. happy, a devoted West Coast fan. That's true. Yeah. Oh, Hayden is yep. a West Coast fan, is he? Yeah, a very devoted West Coast fan. He's a West Coast nuffy on Facebook, really? if you will. Yeah, a little bit. I've oh, seen a few good. enough comments. Good. Yeah. Um, you got to have a bit of enough in you to be an Eagles fan, what can I say? Ruben was a free man of fan, so we've oh, had yeah. to convert him. Um, yeah, it sounds like the family's come over pretty quick, you reckon? Yeah, you'd hope so. <laughs> yeah, you would. <laughs> you'd hope your family oh, yeah. wasn't still torn. <laughs> <laughs> I would be if I could get drafted by West Coast. Yeah. But <laughs> I ultimately would succumb. But true, that's very true. It yeah. would be... Yeah. yeah, I'd play for a couple of years for a free man and then request a trade to a big Victorian club. <laughs> 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 and then back to West Coast, that's the way to do it. Um, yeah, so uh, West Coast needs going into this draft were, um, I, I would have said, midfielders, yep. particularly early. Um, and then I wanted a ruck. And yeah. I had a preference for it being Barnett, but yep. I would have also been happy with a Noble or a Broadbent. Broadbent didn't even get taken, but uh, as a fallback, I needed, yep. I needed a ruck. Uh, Jinbi, uh, I was not indifferent about. I think I see the appeal as a big-bodied mid- midfielder, but I loved when we backed it up with Elijah Hewitt, who was yep. an out-and-out midfielder. So Jinbi's converted to being a midfielder this year. He- Hewitt is an out-and-out midfielder who plays forward um, yep. in the league side, so he's got versatility. But I think the two of them together really offsets... Um, they, they sort of like balance each other yep. out a little bit. So two dynamic midfielders and immediately become the two most talented midfielders on West Coast list under 22. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we also had a Jai Cully this year, yep. uh, so I heard I have slightly behind them. And Campbell Chess are yet to be seen, but he's got the upside to even match those guys. I with, hope so, yeah. yeah. So obviously, yeah, we're quietly confident on, on Chess, as, as anyone would be with a first round who hasn't played yet. Not Chess, not Chess <laughs> this time last year, mate. Yeah, I had to be converted on that one. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly the sort of thing you don't want to do on live streaming but um you don't yeah. want to get caught streaming live no no it wouldn't be the first time uh but yeah so you're right so that's for i mean cully was considered a top 20 prospect this year like if you extrapolated it down so that's for close to enough close enough to first round midfielders uh barnett the best ruckman available yep uh virgil as well looks really good and noah long um as sort of smaller utility types virgil kind of looks more like a wingman but skillful um, that's Kobe pick 28 yeah, Co- yeah Kobe yeah. Virgil I just knew Virgil. it was Kobe yeah I, Kobe yeah. <laughs> yeah I just saw Kobe pick 28 yeah cool. yeah yeah. so um, yeah it just looks like a re- it has really good attributes um, and Noah Long I think was a bit of a bargain considered to go in the 30s probably uh, last all the way to the 50s small inside mid who's added a bit of forward uh, string to his bow, so to speak and we kind of need forwards as well so I think we ticked a lot of boxes and talent wise the, the types of players we wanted, they're good enough talent at each pick and 
uh, a couple of locals as well doesn't hurt. So overall, very happy with what West Coast has done. And um, be interesting to see how early some of these boys get opportunities because I think all of them other than Barnett could play next year. Uh, but you wouldn't imagine all of them play. So I'd imagine yeah. there's a bottleneck there competing with you know, O'Neill's, Edwards, yeah. who also need game time. Oh, uh, no, they've got to beat out O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> How daunting. He actually finished the year pretty well. So we are yeah. confident about him. But even best case scenario, we think the, we think the midfield is likely to be around Jinby and Hewitt and yeah. to a lesser extent Cully. So now we've got the primary pieces. I think O'Neill yeah. could become a good secondary Like your Hutchings, your... I, I'd like to think he'd exceed Hutchings. Yeah. I, th- I think there's talent there. Like an Embley to the rest of them. Probably not as good as Embley. Not as good as Embley. Not as good as Embley. Embley's very good. But. Uh, probably like a poor man's Redden. Yeah, yeah. Redden was a bloody good player. Yeah. yeah. So something around that ranking in our yeah. midfield. Um, so he was a side piece. We didn't have yeah. any primary pieces. Yeah. We didn't have a Brayshaw or yeah. Sarong. Maybe we still You're don't. just flirting with O'Neill until you could get a crack at those main pieces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I still think O'Neill will get games next year. So yeah. not to make it a tangent, but uh, overall, the you look at West Coast Young List now and you're like, oh, okay. They've got some talent now. Yep. It's not as dire yep. as it was. So, um, I we've think had we, a draft. We, we've done well in terms of recouping some of the Tim Kelly damage. Um, so we gave up two firsts and two seconds, uh, obviously for Kelly. This year we took two firsts and two seconds. Last year we took an extra second rounder. Next year we've got an extra second and a third. So we kind of made up the difference. We're still uh, first rounder down. So I, I think the Eagles recruiting team... Needs but you've still got Tim Kelly as well. Yeah, that's right. Who's yeah. not that old. No, so he will be 29 yeah. next year. Yeah. So And he might look better with a few of those younger guys around him rather than being yeah. the main guy carrying the older Shuey Gaff, mm. Redden types. Yeah, I, I have no regrets over the Kelly deal. Yeah. It's just more a point that obviously we sold the farm yeah, to some extent definitely. and we've recouped that. Yeah. Uh, part of We were able to do that because we were so yeah. shit. So Whereas, we had picked two to trade, yeah. but still. Yeah. And Freo <laughs> was kind of the inverse. We had lots of years of over-investing in the draft so we were able to... True. Do the mother load deal like you guys did for Kelly, like we did for Jackson. Mm-hmm. But we'd done our spending beforehand, whereas you guys have had the strategy to make it up afterwards, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. prior we'll to the to. Kelly trade, were sort of pretty consistent, just taking what picks you had sort of thing, mm-hmm. really. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Mm. Cool. All right, enough about our clubs. Um, now, we didn't want to talk about losers in this, in this video because I'm not a believer that you can make an assessment on any club losing the draft. But I think I would kind of like to look at GWS because I don't think they had the, the night that they'd, they could have had. Mm. Not because they did poorly, just because that's the way things went. So they added Cadman, kit, uh, best key position player in the draft. Um, they've got their Cameron replacement. Uh, no, no questions there. So yeah. after that, they just had some bad luck. So Ooh, yeah. Sydney's come into the draft. And just decided to shit house their way kings through. of shit posting. God, I love the I love what they did this draft, Sydney. So piecing together a little bit of like the the draft goss, right? Yep. Sydney had an in principle deal with Essendon for this pick to be traded to Essendon, assuming Elijah Hewitt was still on the board. That's the yep. rumor. That's the prevailing rumor. Hewitt's not on the board. Suddenly, Sydney have this pick that they wanted to trade because, excuse me, they want to trade into next year. Don't really, I presume, don't really rate this year's first round compared to next. So plan A is off the table. They've got to quickly scramble to trade this pick to somebody. Um, so they bid on two players to stall for time. They bid on Harry Rouston, who I don't know the kid that well. Like I said, blind eye a little bit because he's an academy player. Yep. But nobody was considering that kid top 30, to yeah. be honest. Maybe at a push top 30, definitely not top 20. Some, yeah. I heard some in the 20s, but on the whole, yeah, a bit later. Fair enough. Either way, he's a big bolter. Yeah. So he gets bid on at pick 16. So the effect on GWS is they'd probably, they had picks 15, 18, 19. They'd probably plan for Rouston to get bid on in the 20s, which means uh, you absorb their pick 31. Yeah, yeah. Instead, they have to use pick 17 to match. Um, and the effect of that is they blow their first pick on the player that they thought they were going to get with their fourth pick yeah. or their second pick. Yeah. So Sydney, <laughs> Sydney fucked them over. <laughs> and then <laughs> follow up by buying some time and bidding on Macla- uh, Michael- Michelini? Michelini? Michelini, Michelini? Yeah. Sorry, I can't, I've struggled yeah. with that pronunciation for some reason. Yeah. Uh, an Adelaide player again. Pretty early. Yeah. Like, 20s was considered yeah. a bit early for him. Either. 27, low end of the 20s, I think. Was yeah, where I saw yeah, that was kind of where the mocks had him. Um, so then they, they forced Adelaide. I don't think it hurt Adelaide too much. Um, and then, of course, trade the pick back, Sydney. They trade with Hawthorne, yeah. as we alluded to earlier. So GWS has blown the, the second pick of the day um, on a, an academy player. I shouldn't say blown, but like obviously contextual. Yeah. They wanted to take him later. 
And then, um, obviously, Sydney traded back, and then a couple of players went. Ed Allen, Josh Weddle, and Constanti. Yep. The rumour is that GWS wanted Constanti. Hmm. So Sydney ended up taking him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that part of yeah. the shit posting. Uh, so, again, this is a little bit of conjecture we don't yeah. know that's the case but that is the rumor that Constantia to the Giants was who they wanted with one of those picks so they lost Ralston and then Sydney took sorry no they lost one of their first pick on Ralston and then Sydney took the player that they wanted uh then that then on the effect of that was they missed out on an Ed Allen or a uh, Josh Weddle if they wanted them so that was a big blow and then the funniest well the final blow of the Sydney shit poster is when they traded down with Hawthorne they got the pick 27 plus the Fitch second, Fitch third, as you said. Mm. That pick 27, they took Hawthorne's academy player, but they couldn't even bid on until after the 40s. Yeah, exactly. After Which they was... traded that pick from them. They, they're just the kings of shit posting this draft. Yeah, yeah. No, they've done... They've Thank done. you for your entertainment <laughs> this draft, Sydney. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so just looking at GWS's mix, yes, they got uh, a key forward, so they're not, they're not losers. They got pick one. Um, if anything, I probably thought they would pick a more genuine midfielder. So, Rouston is a midfielder, but I think there were still some good midfielders available that they didn't take. Darcy Jones is a smaller midfielder, probably going to become a utility. Grzewski, a tall utility. McMullen's kind of a forward mid, but I just think in an ideal world, they've picked like a a genuine on-baller who's got a bit more of a profile about him in, with one of those picks, considering they lost Taranto, Hopper, Brun, and uh, somebody else that's escaping me. Might not even be a midfielder, but... Oh, Bobby Hill. Yeah. But the other three, those are three genuine midfielders. So, yeah. um, not a criticism, but uh, I, I think they walk away from that thinking it could have been better. And it's not really their fault. Um, as for Sydney, they did have a weird draft, as we said. They took the academy player, a massive bolter. Um, they tried it into next year... Uh, which is a win on paper anyway. As we said, the other side yeah. of that is they get an extra second and third year uh, pick next year. I think some Sydney fans were a little bit critical. They didn't quite address their list needs um, and picked three players that they thought were kind of random, hmm. to be honest. And I think that's fair. Uh, I can't remember exactly. So they got Constanti, Vickery, and another player that is escaping me. I didn't write it down. but The yeah. Troll Kings. Yeah. They're even trolling their own supporters. You absolute <laughs> kings. <laughs> yeah, well, funny stuff. Praise be the Swannies. Yeah. And that's uh, why I hopped on them on the finals wagon as well, I guess. Yeah. They've paid it off. They've paid me back. True, yeah. Mm. Cool. All right, so the second section is I, w- I was going to, or well, the next section I was going to have a look up were kind of, um, we kind of talked about them already. Yeah. It was to break down the trades. It was the Blues traded a future second uh, for Lockie Cowan, essentially, yeah. and the Pies... That pick was pick year. thirty, wasn't it? Pick thirty. That's so their right. future second will be about that anyway, Carlton. Yeah, if you th- that's right. Do reasonably well next year. That's right. So the Pies accumulate another second rounder in uh, in a stronger draft, and the Blues get their man in Cowan. Uh, the Hawks, as I said, gave up essentially uh, Cooper Vickery round. Oh, sorry, the Swans received Cooper Vickery uh, a second and a third uh, for Josh Weddle, and, and the third trade was a bit of a strange one for me. Uh, the Crows and the Suns did a deal, and. Uh, Pick 43, Adelaide got. They traded yeah. back into the draft and uh, swapped their 79 to the Suns. And the only thing going back the other way was they swapped their seconds and thirds next year. So it's hard to break that down exactly, but the Crows kind of just got an extra free third rounder. Uh, and the Suns are kind of really banking on the fact that they're going to finish a fair bit higher than Adelaide. Uh, Do you think that's brave? A little bit brave. I suppose, I mean... I wonder how much of this was Adelaide getting creative after the earlier bid on Michelin. Definitely. It would be that. They wanted their man in Billy Dowling, so that's who they eventually took. Uh, But the Suns, to swap rounds two and three next year with Adelaide, so they're inverted now. They they get to pick the opposite team. The Suns, therefore, are banking on Adelaide doing a lot worse. than. I'm just curious, not really with any... It's not a loaded question. Is that brave? Because I don't actually think Adelaide are that far behind the Suns. Yeah, it's it could end things. up being a downgrade. Yeah, it's one of those things. But either way, it sort of swings. It'll only be probably a three, four pick yeah. swing from where you're supposed to be. Either way, yeah. However, these two teams play out. So then my comment is, they're just doing Adelaide a favour. Yeah, pretty much. It's Gold Coast. I love doing everyone favours. <laughs> Good point. Why do I even bring that up? That's, <laughs> this is like the least one-sided deal they've ever they done. They always do one for the boys. Gold Coast. I just think they could. There's a chance they get negative value on that. Yeah, could be, uh, and sure. best case scenario, they Adelaide tank and or and like they get pick nineteen or whatever. But 
even a much more likely scenario is that they just get a very very slight win yeah it'll be like most likely a one or two pick difference like it'll yeah. be like the difference between finishing 12th and mm. like 14th or something on the ladder and maybe they see that as better than nothing they were not going to yeah. use that pick anyway but it seems like a little bit of a favor mm. i don't know anyway uh we'll rattle through some bolters and sliders um i'll just got a short list here because i thought this draft more or less went to play and there weren't weren't too many shocks obviously um, we talked about Cooper Vickery. That was a big bolt. Yeah. It, was, it was the academy kids that bolted. Fletcher went a little bit early. Yeah. Rouston and uh, McElhaney, absolutely. Uh, Weddle at pick 18, yeah. the, the traded full pick, was a bit of a bolt, um, but not a massive one, to be yeah. honest. And it's usually the way when a team's trading up for a pick like that. It's mm. usually someone, not necessarily the guy rated at that pick, but yeah. someone they've identified that they just want. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it was the top of his range, but still a little bit of a surprise. Ed Allen as well. Uh, that was that was a bit of a hard one to read. I wouldn't say he strictly bolted, but he kind of... I think on Fox Footy they said he slid because mm. they had him rated at 12. Yeah, yeah. So I, it's very subjective. But Ed Allen, like prior to the National Combine, was no, uh, sorry, yeah, the Draft Combine was um, not even in the top 30. Yeah, yeah. So to go in the first round I'd say overall that's that's a bolt maybe not on draft night mm. it's a bolt but yeah. in general he uh, to him to go first round Darcy Jones pick 21 mm. bit of a bolt because yes he was linked to the Giants but other than that he was that was the only link he had to the first round um, so he probably went a little bit earlier than than what he may have been taken if GWS didn't just have a liking for him um, the sliders Harry Lemmy as I said was a top 3 prospect at the start of the year Tom Scott he was probably top 5 to 10 as well both went 47 and 53 um, David Jr. bid came late so that's a slide to 45 Hotton at 35 I thought was a slide and Keeler at 44 a little bit of a slide considering the last few months like he's, he's kind of dropped so St Kilda got a couple of those which is a good result for them yeah. Oh, yeah, just a, before we jump into the clubs, I'll give a quick little shout-out to Josh Richards, I think his name was, from Collingwood. He was a mature-age guy, 23 years old, I think, taken out of Wangaratta, regional Victorian team. Like, yeah, right. Playing country footy, he gets drafted. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, that's, make pretty, that connection. that's pretty wild. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. I think he, who was his coach? Or someone who used to play AFL. I forget who his coach was, but his mm. coach reckoned about halfway through the year he started getting calls from recruiters and stuff. Wow. Yeah. So he didn't play VFL? No, I was playing for like Wangaratta in like the wow. whatever part of Victoria League that's in. Is he the little blonde guy? Uh, I, I think little, he was blonde, yeah. He was standing next to like, Ed Allen and um, their other recruit who is yeah. escaping me right now. Who did they get? Yeah, a bit peroxide looking blonde. Y- yeah, possibly, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ed Allen is an absolute monster. Yeah. He's about 194, so... Yeah, that's uh, another reason why he kept Boltons. He kept growing. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then sort of consolidated himself as a midfielder this year. Yeah. Um, so we'll just run through the clubs that we haven't mentioned in this pod to finish it up yep. um, because we didn't think they did poorly, but it seems weird to talk about half the clubs. So um, we didn't really have too much to say about the Crows. I think they did okay. They traded yep. out of the draft for Ranking. So they, that yep. on the whole, that was their trade period focus. Um, they got their father-son defender and then Dowling and Bond later. I don't know yeah. too much about Bond. I know ba- Dowling's a decent midfielder out of South Australia. Uh, the Pies got Allen. That's kind of risk-reward, that yep. pick, because... Um, hasn't really, uh, th- probably hasn't proven himself consistently as you know those other top line first round WA mids um, because I don't, I don't remember if he was in the champs actually I can't remember but he, he played a little bit he might have, uh, yeah he might actually did play in the champs but, um, but he never played above Waffle Colts so that's what I'm thinking yeah. comparatively so a uh, little bit of less of a profile in terms of proven midfield form because he only became a midfielder this year. Jacob Ryan's the other bloke. He's pretty yep. tall. Um, that's who that took. Uh, and they thought they might have been into him at pick 16. They get him at 28. Um, I thought they might go a key defender because I thought that was kind of a need. I know they got Frampton, but uh, on talent, they got mm. at least two good picks. I don't know too much about that mature age you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, me neither. I just heard he was a mature age out of Wangarado. And yeah. I was just like, huh. So a decent yeah, risk-reward one there as well. Uh, Geelong took Clark with that Bose pick. Uh, and then they took uh, Phoenix Foster late, who's a ruckman. Uh, they think might become a key defender at the next level. Um, but, you know, I guess yeah. you could say they're a winner because they were gifted that trade. Yeah, but yeah. They kind of just took the guy you'd expect. Yeah, Jack so. Bowes was steak knives. Yeah, <laughs> they'll be happy. Uh, they'll yeah. be happy. Uh, the Suns took Humphrey with their one pick. They had yeah. pick six. Um, they took a, a player that's um, got a point of difference compared to what they've got. A very yeah. big midfielder forward. Um, yeah. Worst case becomes a permanent forward. Uh, best case becomes a hybrid mid forward, um, yeah. which you know those players, the good ones, are um, there's a premium on them. 
The Demons took Jefferson, so a key forward. Yep. Um, obviously, they lost Wiedemann. And Jackson, even to an extent. Exactly. So Jackson and Wiedemann left the club, two young key position players. Uh, so they replaced it with Jefferson, who's the second best key forward after Cadman. And I don't know much about Jared Adams. I think he's West Australian. They took him at pick 38. Uh, Port Adelaide, again, had a suite of late picks. They took two tall backs and a key forward. Uh, Tom Scully was a bit of a slider. So there's there's some upside in Scully, I think. But again, not much to write home about in terms of analysing. Um, Richmond took a couple of WA Defender slash utilities. So they got Caleb Smith out of Melville, yep. which is uh, my stomping ground. So Very nice. Um, yeah, that's cool for them. Uh, good sort of small defender. Uh, I think it was some interest from West Coast. And Steely Green as well. So I actually what know I know Steely Steely Green's personal trainer. Uh, um, he's been talking about Steely Green all year, saying he's going to get drafted. He's going to get drafted, um, and sure enough, gets picked up as a um, sort of a defender utility. Kind of plays a bit in the midfield. Played played most of the year, I think, in the South Fremantle's league team. So shout out to Steely. Well done. Uh, and if the dogs did they did pretty well actually. Probably yeah. worth a mention earlier. Uh, but they got the best key back in the draft, a player that I thought matched their needs. And then a uh, good small forward. I was a big fan of Charlie Clark, who's a good sort of, um, what's the word? Niggly sort of small forward, pressure type, annoying goal sneak. Yeah. Um, which, Pest type. Yeah, yeah. Well, at least yeah, that's Toby Green, like, Hayden Ballantyne. Waitman. Waitman type, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so uh, I, think, I think it's just a good value pick, that one, yeah. Charlie Clark. I would have been happy at West Coast as well, so... Cool. That's uh, that's probably the draft more oh, or yeah. less wrapped up. We didn't go. We went more into some teams than others naturally because we had a bit more to say. Just because you said those last few fast doesn't mean it was a wrap. <laughs> True. None of it rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Cool. So yeah, a, a good draft once again. Um, certainly, I'll be watching my highlight clips for the next two months of Ruben Jinby, yep. Elijah Hewitt. I, I was so happy. You, you saw my reaction when we got oh, here. Yeah. I didn't even know I wanted him that much. Uh, but what, when they called him out, I cheered. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's who I wanted. <laughs> it was kind of a funny experience. But oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's nice to have a bit of young talent that we can look forward to once we start getting creamed next year. We can say, oh, play baby. the kids again. We haven't been able to say that for two years because the kids <laughs> didn't exist. So, uh, yeah, I'm a happy Eagles fan. Um, and uh, yeah, that's probably probably the last footy related pod we'll do this year, oh, yeah. um, if not the last at all. So, uh, thank you for joining us through this 2022 season. Oh, yeah, thank you, Busha, for uh, always being a host. Uh, oh, sorry, right. always providing your house as the oh, host. Baby. I was going to say we might have to rush a few to get to a hundred of the yeah. potential happening True. may or may not happen. We'll have to do a soccer World Cup oh, yeah. series. I'll brush up on my soccer. Yeah, we'll just have it. We'll just talk shit for like ten minutes and count them as podcasts, just so we can get to a hundred. Yeah, I think we can. Got to do a hundred. We can't do that already, just for longer. <laughs> um, yeah, no, in all seriousness, I'm excited for the World Cup um, round of sixteen yeah. game against Argentina. Yeah. I we just got to get to penalties. <laughs> That's all. Oh, yeah, um, but we should be good. But yeah, thank you guys. Um, have a good Christmas and New Year, because uh, we probably won't be doing a pod before then. Um, and thank you for tuning into the channel throughout this year. It's been great. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next year. Bloody F.